afternoon and welcome to Chronicle TV. I'm LaShonda McEwen. Today we will bring you our first televised debate from the Chronicle TV studios. It's the debate project of the debate club Turning Point USA and Richland Student Media. The debate will stream live at richlandstudentmedia.com and serve as our podcast on a website afterwards. The topic today is gun control and its impact on society. Brian Miranda with the Debate Club will argue that gun control laws have a positive impact on society. And Andrew Castillo with Turning Point USA will argue that gun control laws have a negative impact on society. Professor Karen Matz with the Journalism Department will serve as our moderator. Aishi Gul Atej will serve as our timer. This will be a Lincoln-Douglas style debate. Each side would make an opening speech, cross-examine, and deliver a rebuttal. This style of debate determines a winner. We're asking our audience to decide. We will poll our studio audience prior to the debate and afterwards to determine their opinions, pros, con, and neutral. We encourage those joining online to do the same. Please have your instructor email the results to Richland Chronicles at gmail.com by Friday, October 20th. We will announce the winner of the debate in the October 24th issue of Richland Chronicles. I will turn things over now to our moderator, Professor Karen Matz. With the Lincoln-Douglas debate, the person defending the argument begins. That's Brian Miranda. He's going to speak in favor of gun control laws. Andrew Castillo will then cross-examine. After that, Mr. Castillo will deliver a speech opposing gun control. At this point, neither debater can introduce new arguments. Mr. Miranda will conduct his cross-examination, followed by his rebuttal. Mr. Castillo will deliver his rebuttal, and Mr. Miranda will follow with a closing statement. Each segment is closely timed. The debaters have four minutes of prep time they can use at their discretion during the debate. Mr. Miranda, if you're ready, please begin. Is my opponent ready? Yes, sir, go ahead. Is the timekeeper ready? All right. I would like to begin by starting out with what we're going to be valuing here throughout the entire debate. Our value will be, will be a societal obligation towards a society, more specifically the President of the United States and the state governors from each of their own states. When presidents and state governors go into office, they make an oath. More specifically, they make an oath to serve its community. And when they make that oath, they are responsible for what happens in that community. And they must make actions to improve said community and resolve any issues that arise from it. An issue that is rising today is gun violence. As a matter of fact, recently we had the Las Vegas shooting, but that wasn't the first of the many mass shootings we've had this year. So before, before I begin with my points, I would like to introduce a few definitions. We define mass shootings according to the FBI. Mass murder was described as a number of murders, four or more occurring during the same incident. Murder, according to the Oxford Dictionary, is the unlawful premeditated killing of one human being by another. All right. And responsibility, according to Cambridge Dictionary, is a duty to take care of something. So... All right, we'd like to begin with our first contention being inherency, or also known as the status quo. Since the Sandy Hook shooting, there's been over 1,000 mass shootings here in the U.S., according to Vox 2016. There have been at least 1,126 1, mass shootings. The counts come from the Gun Violence Archive, a database that tracks events since 2013, in which four or more people, not counting the shooter, were shot at the same general time and locations. Since some shootings aren't reported, the database is most likely missing some shootings. They appear to be getting more common according to an analysis from the Harvard School of Public Health researchers. Researcher from the Harvard Public School of Public Health called the definition Fox uses too broad. Even the gun violence archives broad definition, it's worth noting that mass shootings only make up a tiny portion of Americans' firearms deaths, which is more than 32,000. So we only hear about the mass shootings in the news. However, there are many more shootings that the news hardly ever talks about. And when they do, they only talk about for maybe three days. So 
All right, so what's the root cause of all of this? Well, actually, states are in charge of making their gun laws. Some states are weak with their gun laws. Some states are strong with their gun laws. However, we need the nation to be strong with their gun laws. So, so contention two being lax laws. In the most recent shooting, the, perp the perpetrator legally obtained his weapons due to the very loose gun laws that Nevada has from the CNN article in 2017. Now, so some facts about Nevada. The right to bear arms is literally in the constitution of Nevada. You don't need a permit to buy a gun. Carrying an unconcealed firearm is legal. It's legal to own assault weapons and large capacity magazines for ammo. There is no mandated waiting period to buy a gun. You can bring a gun to a polling place, to a casino, and to a bar. The law enforcement are required to issue a concealed handgun permit to anyone who meets their very low standard basic qualifications. And Nevada voters passed a ballot measuring last year's requiring a background check for firearm transactions between private parties, but the state attorney has put that law on hold. And according to the Law Center of Prevent Gun Violence, it has a C- minus on gun laws. And as a matter of fact, guns with weak gun, states with weak gun laws tend to have higher incidents of gun violence, according to a research from Harvard Injury Control Research Center. Where there are more guns, there's more homicide. A review of evidence indicates that gun availability is a risk factor for homicide both in the U.S. and in high-income countries. Case control studies where there are more guns, both men and women are at higher risk for homicide, particularly firearm homicide. We estimate that the association between gun availability between 2001 and 2003, we found that states with higher levels of household gun ownership have higher rates of firearm homicide and just overall homicide in general. And we actually have a, a graph here that states that the more the more guns that each state owns, the more gun deaths there are, according to a uh, to a graph put together by pediatrics and the CDC and. All right, contention three is domestic issues. As we have mentioned, there are other issues that arise from gun violence. A good chunk of people from gun violence comes from suicide. In an interview with psychiatrist Lisa Gold suggests, because studies are, because the thing about suicides is that they are impulsive, meaning that there's a very short amount of time between the decision and the action. 75% of suicides occur in home and many are also fueled by alcohol, which decreases the inhibitions and increases compulsivity. With or without mental illness, someone could be sitting at home going through a crisis and next thing you know they decide to shoot themselves because they acted on impulse. That. But some people might try to argue, well, they're going to find a way to kill themselves either way, so why even bother? Well, as a matter of fact, that's called mental substitution. And the thing is, there's no studies that actually confirms that claim. Because for every step you put between somebody and a firearm, you also decrease the suicide, injury, and homicide rates. For example, the suicide rate decreases about 10% if you keep a gun in your house unloaded. And then it decreases another 10% if you keep it locked and unloaded. And then another 10% if you keep it locked, unloaded, and keep the animation locked somewhere else, and so on and so forth. So uh, several instances of domestic violence end in death. Another chunk of the gun deaths come from women who were killed by abusive spouses. Domestic violence is inexorably bound to happen to our, due to our weak gun laws. Women in the U.S. are more likely to be murdered with guns than they are in any other high-income country. The risk of homicide for women if there is a gun in a domestic violence situation is 500%. An example of that actually happened in Plano just a few weeks ago. A woman was killed during the shooting because her husband was angry. They've been having issues with their relationship. So he acted on impulse, killed, her, killed his wife, and killed a couple of his friends. This happened only a few weeks ago. And finally, we suggest the following plan. The United States federal government should substantially increase their gun restrictions. Many experts agree that gun control is the only way to solve, according to an article from New York Times 2017. And as a matter of fact, California has strict gun laws and their gun death rate has been steadily decreasing as of 2013. I now stand by for cross-examination. I am more than happy to elaborate on my evidence in my CX as well as in my following speeches. Thank you. Mr. Uh, Miranda, yes, um, that's a, a very, very uh, competitive argument I like. But I just want to ask you a quick question. I mean, mm -hmm. look at this one. Just according to the American In Enterprise Institute, please mm -hmm. explain how more guns inevitably, be, inevitably means more murder. If 50%, 56% of, of privately owned firearms of the number of privately owned firearms compared to a low gun homicide rate, according to the American Inter Enterprise Institute, from 1998 to 2013, the number has gone low. So there's no direct correlation. Can you explain how more firearm explain, m means more murder? I am more than happy to answer that. Uh, actually, I have a sheet of evidence from a study they did with Chicago. Well, so Chicago, 
has some decent fire, um, fire, fire gun control regulations. Uh, they actually scored a B uh, on 2016, but the states nearby scored Fs uh, and Ds. Uh, so what does that mean about the correlation? How does more guns equal more gun violence? Well, as I mentioned in my speech, anything involving a gun is kind of impulsive to say the least. Like the man killed his wife out of impulse. People tend to kill themselves out of impulse. I'm just talking about gun violence in general. Now, if you're talking about mass shootings, how does that relate? Well, it's just, well, it's just think of it like this. The guns are a lot more easier to access. And uh, some people will try to claim, well, what if the gun isn't even there? So, well, as a matter of fact, gun, when people break into homes, I have a sheet of evidence right here, actually. People break into homes, they tend to steal jewelry, electronics, and guns. So, so criminals will try to steal guns. And since criminals try to, you know, steal any property they can that's considered valuable, they'll be most likely to steal a gun. But are you aware that if more um, criminals are not emboldened to to read, to listen to laws criminals there's no correlation that criminals are going to obey laws because they're not regardless of gun control there's just no correlation well allow me to ask you this then why have laws in the first place if criminals don't listen to laws why do we have murder laws why do we have laws that try to help that punish people who who rape college students why do we have laws that instate that they must go through some kind of like like y'all went through some kind of uh, what's it called What's it called? When, uh, I'm sorry, I forgot what it's called. But you know, when we first entered campus, they gave us a tour of the campus and they told us, oh, here are some facts about sexual assault and sexual assault laws. So why even have laws in the first place if criminals just simply don't listen to laws? If you look at Chicago, the murder rate is about to surpass the murder rate of 2016. Does it look like we're going to have uh, criminals that are going to listen to laws in Chicago? No, they're not. They're, they're just not. Uh, may I answer his question before we move on to his speech? Sure. Okay. A part of the reason why the gun violence rate rose uh, is somewhere in the mid to late 2000s, uh, they overturned a bill about uh, gun control. Uh, basically, the bill has been around for quite a bit, so, so that's why people have fond memories of Chicago not being so violent. But ever since, that, ever since they overturned the bill uh, saying that, oh, we're not going to be as tight with gun control, uh, crime has been steadily increasing. Uh, and as I already mentioned earlier in my cross-examination, the, the nearby states from Illinois have weak gun laws, and Illinois honors gun permits from other states. Uh, so, uh, that, that's about it. Uh, are you ready for your speech? Ready. All right. Wow, how y'all doing? It's it's a uh, it's a pleasure, really. Uh, Turning Point USA is gonna do big things here on this campus, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna explain how gun control is not gonna work. Okay, it hasn't worked ever in this country. Uh, listen, look, we're gonna look at it this way: more gun laws will embolden the criminal and harms law-abiding citizens. You look at it this way: you know, I don't condone, I don't support. I think it's disgusting, really, to tell you the truth. I don't support the guy. What happened in Las Vegas? But I'm going to have to make an unpopular statement. Guns save lives. You know, we need to get rid of gun-free zones, okay? You look at Chicago, Washington, D.C., and Seattle. I've been in two out of three, D.C. and Seattle, okay? You look at Chicago, toughest gun restrictions in America, okay? Like I just said, they're, they're already going to surpass the murder rate from 2016 to now. 500 murders. Y'all want to live in a city like that? I don't think so. I wouldn't, okay? It's lack of leadership, okay? The leadership is just, they're, worried about, they're more concerned about Washington, D.C. than their own city, okay? I went and I saw for myself. I went where I saw, had a billboard that said, Trump, show us your taxes. Well, there's, why? You know, fix your own city first. Just recently, last year, there was an armed customer in Arlington, at a park in Arlington, and a psychopath came into the Arlington restaurant in, at, uh, I don't know, Ojos Locos, and ends up shooting the store manager. Well, thank God there was a armed customer in there and shot the guy dead. Because you look at it this way. The Second Amendment is to protect us from government tyranny. We don't just have it because, oh, it's second to first. There's, it's strategically placed, okay? And 
what it does is that it's to protect us. That's why, according to the Constitution, it says, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Okay? Now, let me look at, let me tell y'all something. This is a myth. Y'all probably think this, but y'all think probably think that it's easier to get a gun than a driver's license. Well, that's a myth, because first you need a driver's license to get a gun, okay? You know, it's a fundamental right to have gun ownership, you know, than, than have a driver's license, okay? Now, let me explain what happened in D.C. D.C., you happened to Congressman Steve Scalise, okay? He was shot at a baseball game. Y'all remember that during the summer? Shot. He didn't have a gun. You want to know why? Because it was a gun-free zone. We need to get rid of him because when you're in gun-free zones, you have no protection. Absolutely nothing. Seattle, they just supposed a $25 levy on, uh, on every gun purchase, but there was no correlation to that made the city less violent and every five, and every five cents uh, bought on ammunition. D.C., you can't have a gun on the Capitol. Chicago, well, there's absolutely no, there's no point, okay? You have, there's nothing going right in that city. The word about what's clear across a thousand miles in their own city. Now, another point I want to make. Uh, the Las Vegas gunman, he passed the background checks 30 times. He bought a gun here in Garland. Uh, let's look at it this way. If the gunman had rammed everybody using a truck, like they did in France. Would we talk? Would we be talking about truck control? Mm -mm. Now look at also government regulations. Why are we not concerned about government putting government regulations on tobacco companies? According to Truth.com, thousands have died from tobacco products that these tobacco companies are targeting uh, potential smokers in schools, playgrounds, YMCA's, and city parks. I look at it this way. There's pro and cons to having a gun. You know, you can either lose a life or you could save a life. When it comes down to smoking, there's only a con. There's no pro. It kills. That's what it does. We need to put more government regulation on tobacco companies instead of these gun manufacturers. I'm tired of these people considering NRA, NRA owners, members of the NRA, as terrorists. People are so concerned. People are more afraid of middle America than the Middle East. Because I think the NRA is the direct correlation of what's happening in Las Vegas. Okay, look, the te you know, look, at, you know, this part is this is what I like to talk about. Uh, three legitimate reasons for a firearm. Why a person has a firearm? One is for personal defense. You know, y'all probably wonder, do I own any? I actually do. Not in my own house, but at my grandmother's house. Okay, and that I do feel proud of. And I don't brag about my guns. You're not supposed to. Really, you're not. And I see all these hip-hop artists and celebrities bragging about it. You know, they're making a dire, crucial mistake. Second, for hunting. Third, for competitive sports. Those are the three top legitimate reasons for a person that owns a firearm. Now, you know, criminals are not going to just listen to laws. They're not. That's why you look at Chicago, D.C., all across America. They're not going to listen to laws. They're just not. That's why you see uh, a lot of these uh, people that don't own guns, you know, they don't know what to do. They're kill killing little kids. Drive-by shootings all over Chicago. It's ridiculous. And I'm tired of seeing that on the news because these children deserve a future. And yet they're letting the guns in Chicago go off. And yet that, that goes back to the leadership in that city. And I think it's a disgrace really because you look at Vermont and Wyoming, less gun laws and then lung go gun death rates. Real quickly, according to the USA Today, they just published an article uh, just last week giving Chicago a B-plus rating because of their gun control. Going back to what I'm saying, they don't, that's nothing. And then they gave Texas an F-plus. You know, there's no correlation, and it's ridiculous because, you know, a lot of these criminals, they, you know, they're going to do what the hell they want, and, you know, that's fine. But um, that's what I think about gun control, and it has to. It, we're gonna we're gonna put a stop to it, and we need Congress to do things right. We need it to do right on gun control. It's up to them. Thank you.
Before I move on with my cross-examination, I would like to make sure that I understand what you're clearly arguing. So your main arguments are that criminals don't listen to law, so just a simple yes or no, huh? That's correct. Okay. Your argument is that it's our God-given right, huh? By the Second Amendment, so? It's a God-given right to own and bear arms. That's what our Constitution said, and you look at it this way. A, a simple yes. I, yes. Okay. So, and it's for self-defense, so? Correct. All righty then. Okay, I'm going to start off with the Second Amendment. So, simple yes or no. I think we can both agree that the Bill of Rights was supposed to protect its people from the government, correct? Correct. We have the First Amendment in case that we feel like our government's doing something unjust. We could speak out against it. That's why we have freedom of press and freedom of speech. Correct? Yep, that's correct. All right. We have, I believe it's the Fourth Amendment, that we have the right to privacy because the government has no business in trying to get our personal lives. Correct? That's correct. All right. And we have the Fifth Amendment because in case the government is trying to, you know, put us through trial unfairly, we have the right to an attorney, we have the right to remain silent, and so on and so forth. It's supposed to protect ourselves from the government. Correct? Repeat that one more time. So essentially, we have the right to an attorney. We have the right to a fair trial. Oh, sure. Okay. We can And what all those rights have in common is supposed to serve society as a whole. Correct? Mm -hmm. We can agree that it does more good than harm. Correct? Good, more having more gun control than no, harm? No, 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 no. Not talking about gun control. I'm just simply talking about the rights I mentioned. It does more good than harm. Correct? Correct. All right. So... In my first speech, I listed you a bunch of gun statistics and gun deaths, correct? Mm -hmm. And uh, I actually have a sheet of evidence here. Actually, you mentioned that someone stopped a, uh, a, a, a person shooting up a gas station, correct, with their gun, correct? It was a restaurant in Arlington. Restaurant in Arlington, okay, sorry for misunderstanding you. And... Uh, how often do uh, regular Joes stop gun violence? Like, you just ma named one example, and that's great and all, but uh, do they regularly uh, stop, like, uh, are those numbers well, just as high as the number of people who were killed with Well, now guns? they are. Now they are, because according to another incident in Cleveland, an armed Taco Bell customer had, was uh, apparently armed and ended up shooting the robbery. He was about to rob the restaurant at probably 2 in the morning. You know, that's when people go to Taco Bell, I guess. I don't, I'm surprised they're out, up, up late. Uh, it's becoming common now. And it's going to be a lot more common now in this state. Because people in this state are open. There's probably 100 million guns in the state of Texas. And they're becoming more aware. They're not here to brag, but they're becoming more aware to protect their families and their loved ones. What if I read you an article that said... Okay, let me phrase that, sir. May, may I answer him and then we can, okay. You, you listed uh, small incidents. Uh, you gave me things that people are thinking about. Of course, you're going to somewhat feel safer. It's the illusion of safety, which I'll get to in my next speech. Uh, illusion of safety. I don't think it's an illusion. It's real. This is, this is what's happening. There's no illusion. Right. There's no magic to it. It's real. Okay. All right. Well, uh, I should go say my cro the cross-examination time is over, so I will begin with my speech. Uh, so... Before you start the time, I'm going to mention all the arguments my opponent has dropped. Since he has dropped them, he is now no longer allowed to respond to them because he missed his chance. He dropped, uh, he dropped domestic issues such as, uh, su such as suicide and domestic violence. Uh, he dropped, uh, actually that was the big one, he just dropped domestic violence and he dropped suicide. Uh, so he is no longer allowed to bring them up. Uh, okay, so you mentioned that criminals uh, don't listen to laws uh, and that these gun control regulations CERT don't actually really do anything. Well, according to an article from uh, the MSNBC from 2013, when California got strict with their laws, the gun death rate actually decreased. Uh, new figures from the nation show the most populous state, uh, most populous state, by the way, not some small state like D.C. or something. Uh, California passed some of the nation's toughest gun laws over the past two years, and gun deaths across the state have declined by more than half according to a new study. Gun violence across California dropped 56% from 5,500 gun deaths in 1993 to 2,935 gun gun deaths in 2010, according to the study which accounts to California's expanded population from 30 million to 37 million around that same period. And among the 50 states, California perhaps has the strongest gun laws. My opponent mentioned that Illinois has them. No, that's just simply not true. California has the strongest ones as of then, and they have an A on the gun rating system. 
And as I mentioned already, the only reason why there's a lot of guns in California despite their B plus gun rating is that they honor gun permits from other states and the states nearby from other states are at F or D ratings. So if a criminal really wanted to commit a crime, he would go all the way to uh, the nearby states to buy a gun, go back to Illinois, like, oh no, don't worry, I got my gun permit, and then shoot up a bunch of folks. What we need to do is we need to have gun control amongst the, make it a federal matter over a state matter. If all, gu if all states had strict gun control laws, we could possibly decrease the amount of gun deaths. That's what happened with California. He mentioned self-defense, and he listed off a few incidents that happened in a couple of states, and one even by Arlington. That's great and all, but as a matter of fact, they are hardly ever used in self-defense. According to a research done by David Hemway, a professor at Harvard School of Public Health as of 2013, the U.S. is the most heavily armed civilian population in the first world. Advocates argue that gun, the home Guns in the home both deter crime and thwart it. But the scientifics, however, provides very little support for these arguments. As a matter of fact, they provide the exact opposites. As for thwarting crimes, gun advocates claim that they are commonly used in self-defense. But some 90,000 households comprising about 160,000 civilians are surveyed twice a year. Along with Sarah Solnick, a professor at economics in the University of Vermont, analyzed the data from a five-year period from 2007 and 2011 and only less than 1% of them was a gun actually used. And less than 1% of them, a gun actually saved the day. As a matter of fact, more than 42% of the time, the, they took some other action that proved just as effective, including mace, running away, or just simply yelling for help. Huh? In other words, self-defense gun use in our country is actually very, very rare. They're actually more commonly used in crime and in suicide and in domestic violence situations. So the very fact that you're trying to say that gun control, that Putting more gun control does more harm than good is absolutely absurd. And over here, it says that instead the evidence is overwhelming that a gun in the home increases the likelihood that not only someone will get shot accidentally, but that someone in the home will die in a suicide or in a homicide, and, they're most likely, and the guns will most likely be stolen by criminals who try to break in. And here's more evidence on self-defense. From the week 2015, a more recent study, gun skeptics note that in 2012 there were over 8,000 criminal gun homicides in the FBI database, but only 258 of them were actually justifiable. Only a small percent of them was used in actual self-defense. Once again, so, so sure, you're right, criminals are not going to follow every single law. If they're truly, truly terrible people, they'll just commit the crimes no matter what's absolutely stopping them. But if the fact that we are actually saving people from suicide, from the, protecting women from domestic violence, and protecting the state as a whole, it must count for something. Sure, there have been, and I'm not saying we take away guns entirely. I am not saying that. I do agree that people use it for hunting. I do agree that people use it for good sport. And I do agree that people have good intentions when they buy a gun. But if it's causing more harm than good in a society, there is no absolute way to justify it. And he's talking about the Second Amendment. Y'all took a history class, right? Okay. The Bill of Rights was written around the 1700s, back when people had muskets, which took a long time to reload, only one bull in the chamber, and if you were, you were lucky if you even shot the guy, and if you missed, you were most likely dead. We was doing, it was during a time where the U.S. was afraid that the British will try to invade them. And their main philosophy was about that we should not let the government be totally overzealous and over-controlling of its people, the same way Great Britain was. So it was to kind of protect them in some way, shape, or form, kind of way the other Bill of Rights helped them. However, we have advanced so much as a society. Not only are guns more lethal than the musket, I mean, for Christ's sakes, we have machine guns, we have assault rifles, we have semi-automatics that can wipe out a bunch of people in less than a minute. Like, the, the semi-automatic was used in the Vegas shooting, and over 50 people were killed, and several more were actually injured. And talk about how it's to protect them from government tyranny. Okay, if the government really wanted to take us over, they would have done it by now. Let's be honest. If the government was really trying to take 100% absolute control of us, they would have done it by now. They would have tried to strip us away from our rights. Hell, they're protecting the KKK from with this free speech argument. So the government can do whatever they want, basically. But the very fact and that they have not tried to completely take us over suggests that the Second Amendment, the way it was originally intentioned, is absolutely absurd. And they say it's for a militia, but let's be honest, like a bunch of people are just going to form, it's like, okay, we're going to take down President Trump, and we already have other 
militaries that are supposed to protect us. We have, uh, may I finish my sentence, sir? We have, uh, we have army reserves, we have marine reserves. Each state has their own special mil military. We have the, the National Guard. We have all those things to protect us in case something does happen to our country. Thank you, huh? No time to wait. No five. Okay, so you look at it this way. Uh, you know, I bet y'all didn't know this, but um, back in the day, you know, Democrats back in the 1960s opposed gun control. You wanna know why? So the Black Panthers famously advocated for self-defense using guns because they thought that the white they, the whites thought that with blacks having gun on gun guns on them, oh, it's gonna be a riot. Okay. Um, you know, you know, look at it this way. I feel like more women, you know, with our organization, Turning Point USA, we have a, uh, uh, an organization called Empowered, where it has women that they feel empowered, that they give them the right to, that they're not scared of a gun, you know, they're not afraid to shoot, uh, they're pro-NRA, they're pro-family, they're pro-growth, pro-middle class, and that's what they care for. You know, when I see on the news and the media that says that, uh, you know, I'm neither Democrat or Republican, but I do side with, I'm actually a conservative independent. You know, when I see that, oh, well, uh, these Republicans, they're the ones that started this. You know, the gun ton conservatives are the ones that created all this. And it's, it's, a, it's, it's a disgrace because there's a lot of people, uh, you know, believe it or not, there's a, a lot of diversity within the Republican Party, really. Hate them or love them, which is a lot of diversity. Just like Democrats, I, I have a lot of liberal and conservative friends. But an organization we have called Empowered, where it gives women the right to have guns, that they they feel empowered, they feel right, they feel great to own one. Now, you look at Uruguay, and Uruguay has light gun control, light gun control laws. Okay, incredibly small homicide rates, and Switzerland that gives you the right to own a gun, but it's not necessary. They, the reason they, in Finland as well, it gives you the right to own a gun, but, you know, it's usually to own a gun, not for usually hunting and other purposes. It's different from here than uh, over here. Now, gun, I mean, look, I'm going to say it again, less gun laws, low gun death rates. It's happening in Uruguay. It's happening in, uh, here in America. You look at Honduras. They allow people to have a gun. You know, there's a, a post that's kind of false where they have the highest homicide rate in, in, in the world. Well, that's not actually true. But they allow people to have guns to protect themselves. Now, I mean, really, you just look at Chicago. Okay, if, if California has a B-plus rating, then why aren't they doing anything for Chicago? Okay, there's 4,000 victims of gun-related crimes, strictest gun laws. And they're not doing anything about it. Why not? They need to do something. California, they may have a strict gun control there. But, okay, well, it's still going to happen. Chicago, still going to, D.C., it's still going to happen. I mean, really, you know, I, I really feel bad for Congressman Steve Scalise. Really, you know, he should have been armed. He really. And, you know, I'm supporting a bill, a congressman from New York, who's proposing that congressmen own or at least conceal carry in the Capitol. I mean, really, they need to, because that sicko in D.C. just shot him. It was politically motivated. Unlike this one in Las Vegas, he passed it 30 times, but okay, fine. But, you know, there should have been, let's look at this one. Where's the surveillance tapes? They're not showing in Mandalay Bay. I actually had the privilege of going to Las Vegas this past summer, passed in Mandalay Bay, and I went through MGM Grand. There's a whole bunch of surveillance cameras. Why, isn't there, why aren't they showing surveillance cameras all over Mandalay Bay that they're not showing? And... I think there was a second shooter on the sixth floor uh, as in, in the 32nd floor. I've seen a video. Now, I, I mean, really, you know, it, it's a shame that happened in D.C. You know, uh, Congressman Steve Scalise is a Republican. He, I mean, y'all probably, you know, is not a white supremacist, not a white nationalist. You know, and, and it's, a really, it's a shame that a lot of these outlets are portraying as people as, as you know, as as them and it's really a shame what happened in Charlottesville as well because um, now they're arresting a, a black guy uh, that was assaulted by white nationalists and I think it's a shame 
and they think that Republicans are part of it, which is not. No, it's not true. And they're also claiming that the Texas legislation is a part of it. It's also false. So you look at it this way. You know, Seattle, Chicago, D.C., you know, they're having a lot of, uh, and, you know, they're imposing a lot of gun restrictions. And it's, it's, it's all about family, really. All about family, pro-gun, pro-family, pro-growth, uh, bringing jobs to America. And Vermont, Wyoming, less gun laws and low gun death rates. Uh, Texas, uh, you know, uh, concealed carry into your colleges, you know, like it or hate it or love it, you know, it's, uh, I think it's going to do uh, a lot of work in, in community colleges and across Texas, really. And really, I don't like to brag about guns. I like to uh, really do it for self-defense, hunt, or I don't hunt yet, but not supposed to brag, but regardless, Gun ownership is a fundamental right, okay? It's part of our Constitution. We were born and bred in this country, so we're allowed to have a right to own a gun. Gun control, it's up to Congress what they're going to do. Bump stocks? Let's look at bump stocks, yeah. I think we, they should put a, a, uh, a restriction on that, you know. A lot of people don't use military weapons. They do, but it's really up to handguns. You know, bump, they should put a bump stock or a restriction on that. But I think it's all about uh, safety, protection, and family. Um, and, I mean, the Second Amendment states it. So, like I said, it's an ongoing issue. And I think it's going to be a thing that we need to all focus on. But, again, I'm going to reiterate it. And, you know, y'all are probably going to hate me after this. But, you know, guns save lives. Thank you. talk about women real quick since that's the first thing you brought up huh now well i'm not saying that women are weak at all huh but at the very fact that low gun restrictions are actually causing uh, are actually causing more women to be killed by their abusive spouses is absolutely irresponsible huh now you know some women are able to successfully protect themselves from their abusive spouses huh? but what about women who don't have a person to talk to huh how about women who are too afraid uh, to talk to someone about their abusive relationship huh how about women who feel like they are so in too deep that they feel like they cannot possibly get out? What about those women? It is our duty as a society to protect them as well. He brought up other countries and their gun laws. You see, every country has their own set of laws. They have their own constitution. They have their own taxes. More importantly, taxes. There's a reason I didn't bring up Australia or UK or other European countries. Because in Australia, there is a heavy, heavy tax on weapons trying on weapons coming in. So that's why Australia has the least amount of guns. That's why. Europe are very strict with their gun laws as well. And some of them, and some, while some do, while some European countries, such as Sweden, as he mentioned, do allow you to have a gun. But uh, they have several, several, several other restrictions in there uh, as well. I'm sorry to interrupt, but do, would you allow Australia to just confiscate your guns coming to them? It's like martial law. I mean, you don't. Really, they gave them a, Andrew, they gave them no Andrew, choice. I did not interrupt your speeches, so I ask that you don't interrupt my final speech. Yeah. And they say that California is doing absolutely nothing for Illinois. California is its own state. Illinois is its own state. You want to do something for Illinois and Chicago? Push a bill up to to Senate. Put a bill up to the federal level. Look, if you want to help them, that's how you got to do it. So, and he mentioned Las Vegas. He mentioned that he had over thirty guns. Here's the thing, though. Why does anyone truly need dirty guns? People might need them to protect themselves. Yeah, so you might have maybe one or two pistols. Some people use them for hunting. Okay, you might need a rifle or a shotgun. Why do you need 30 weapons? That should have been a red flag for Nevada saying, whoa, this guy keeps too many guns. We should probably take away a few of them, or we should probably not let them have as much. Why would you need that many guns? And he, all, and he keeps mentioning how it's our God-given right. A lot of things were in the Constitution that were seen pretty unjust. You know, we could own slaves back in the Constitution. We didn't allow women to vote back in the, in the Constitution. There were a lot of things that we did not allow. And we fought for our rights for a just society to improve society. 
how are guns improving society? I have, I have read you statistics that guns hardly stop any moments of invasion or any moments of attacks. I have showed you statistics that they're hardly ever used in self-defense. And I've also, may I finish my sentence? Sure. And I've also shown you statistics that states that happen to have more guns and or weaker gun laws tend to have higher crime. He says that there's no correlation, but he has offered And this, do it for women, do it for suicidal people, and do it for society. I urge you to vote for affirmative. Thank you. And that concludes our first televised debate. Gentlemen, would you please shake hands? Great job, yeah. Yes, good, good job. Good job, thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. The Lincoln Douglas style debate concludes with the audience determination of a winner. We're asking our viewing audience to help us decide. Please work with your instructor or advisor to conduct an anonymous poll by paper ballot before and after the debate. Then forward the results to richlandchronicles at gmail.com. We would like to have your votes by Friday, October 20th. We will announce the winner in the next issue of Richland Chronicle, which hits the stands October 24th. This program was the joint project of the Richland Debate Club, Turning Point USA, and Richland Student Media. A podcast of this program will be available at richlandstudentmedia.com. And thank you for joining us.